It's October 12th, 2020. This is Rook. Sometime in the 1990s, a little girl of Iranian descent in France found her footing on the tennis court and set out to follow in the footsteps of her idol, Andre Agassi. By 2010, French-Iranian sensation Aravana Rezaei was ranked number 15 in women's tennis players in the world. She defeated the likes of Maria Sharapova and Venus Williams along the way. But then, like her idol, Agassi, the game was overwhelmed by pressure and family expectations. She stepped away for a few years. Years. Now she's back on the path to the top levels of tennis, and Aravana Rezaei joins us to share her remarkable story. I'm Gian Gomeshi. This is Rock. Welcome to episode number 52 of Rook, coming to you on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, Instagram, and Telegram. Hope you are doing well out there. Omidvar hastam ke sare hol ve radif bashin. Yes. Wow. Uh, wow. Shaya? Yes? No? Uh, actually, after the kayfetun kukbashe... Nothing, nothing is no, as good. It, it, yeah. <laughs> but that's Not even the radif, huh? No, yes, yes. Uh, radif is good. Okay. But kayfetun kukbashe, you know, you... Set the heart pretty high. <laughs> Bo- set what? the bar pretty high. Set the heart pretty bar. <laughs> Thank you, Reza. That's Captain uh, Captain Reza, Groovy Shaya, the fabulous Keon. Hello to you. Hello, Gian. The happy whole, Canadian uh, Thanksgiving. I was going to say, happy Canadian mm. Thanksgiving giving to you as well of course for those people listening in in the states we got a lot of people uh, uh, a bunch of our audiences in, in the states this is not you guys have thanksgiving in november but the real thanksgiving is right now yeah. hmm. i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know which one's the, and for those of you listening in other parts of the world wondering uh i was actually talking to a friend of mine in cambodia yesterday and i said it's thanksgiving do you know what that is and they were like no describe it to me and, and i you know, I know that there are deep roots of Thanksgiving in Canada. I'm not right. sure what they are. I know the American. I know we story. know that because the American narrative is very strong. But it's why? the Pilgrims came and something about it. I don't know what the Canadian thing is except we give thanks. Right. We to have family. turkey. We yeah. celebrate with our family. So anyway, this is a, a happy Canadian Thanksgiving to all of you listening around the world. Um, Aravona Rezaei is our special guest coming up on this show. I really am looking forward to this interview. This, she's got this. First of all, she hasn't done a lot of interviews recently in recent years. I don't think she's done any uh, of length in English. Uh, she's a French Iranian in France. She. This is quite a story of how she basically supported her family from the age of ten until. Uh, her early 20s with her tennis. Uh, She took a few years away from the sport. I guess I'll ask her about what that was about. Uh, I know she's now making a comeback. We'll go to France for Aravona Rezaei in just a few moments. Uh, Before we do that, a big thank you to all those folks out there um, who listened to, who supported, who shared, and sent kind comments about our special edition of Rook a few days ago. The tribute to Shajarian, I am... um, Truly hopeful that we did the the maestro Ostad Shajarian justice with this tribute and um, hearing from 15 prominent Iranians stationed around the world on the day of his death as we did. It has quickly become the most listened to episode of Rook in its uh, first week uh, ever with over 25,000 streams across our platforms in just four days. If you haven't checked it out yet, I hope that you will. Um, Keon? 
uh, uh, we missed you on Thursday I because know. we were doing this marathon here and uh, there was no time for letters. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to come here like, never mind, we don't need you. I was like, great, I'll just well, go you knew. F myself. You, you know, you knew. <laughs> no, of course. You, yeah. And you agreed that it, it was, was a good idea yeah. for us to do something about Of Shadrach. course, I'm just joking. Uh, did you have a, a favorite amongst the, the guests uh, on Hamid Nick Pei, his story about how uh, he was at some gathering and uh, Maestro Shajarian was there and uh, I forget who the other gentleman was saying, oh, why don't you sing for us, Hamid? And he was, this was his earlier days. He wasn't the Hamid Nick Pei that we all know and love. And so he sang and, um, and uh, what I found really profound about uh, uh, Maestro Shajarian's character is that he asked to speak to him in, in the room yes. and that's where he gave him tips about he took how him he to another room that, he didn't that, want to embarrass Hamid in front of uh, people that's and, and profound get, yeah. that, that that's just lovely. shows his character yeah. yeah so that stood out for me by the way we're gonna uh, we've just posted that that's a um, a rook minute we put these little bits of interviews mm-hmm. up on Instagram uh, and uh, Savvy Roham and uh, Ponta the Artist they uh, were Work on those, and so uh, our Rook Minute with Hamid Nick Pay mm-hmm. is on our at our Instagram at, at Rook Media, and I should mention it's Hamid Hamid's birthday today. Happy Tavalod to Hamid Nick Pay from all of us here at Rook. Captain Reza, did you have a, a favorite amongst the um, the folks that we spoke to? I mean, it's hard to pick. They were also it, fabulous. It really is there. hard to yeah. pick. But Abbas Milani mm-hmm. was really quite amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was it my is, second favorite. Wonderful. And mm-hmm. it's so touching that y- you know he's this guy who uh, we've talked about this before. For you. There's no word out of place. Mm-hmm. He gives his perspective. He gives us a historical and a cultural and a social perspective. And then at the end, um, I'm so glad that he answered the personal question and said he's been riding his bike and listening to Shaj- Shaj- yeah. Shaj- yeah. recent. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. Um, uh, Shaya? Yes, actually, I, I was going to say that. You know, I, I, <laughs> I was I was goose palmed when mm. he said that. In, you had goose well, goosebumps. Yeah. Oh, I had. You weren't goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that would be, but it sounds <laughs> rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let okay. him finish. <laughs> okay, I, I went to the club and I was uh, goosebumped. <laughs> <laughs> how dare? How dare he? <laughs> yes, thank you had you. goosebumps. No, thank you yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's okay. I I, I had goosebumps yeah. when he said that it's been for two years when he biked to his work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he laughed, he cried with oh. um, Mr. Sajarian's songs, yes. and yeah, it's that beautiful. was beautiful. And this was a very, you know, uh, if people listen to the end of the episode, they'll hear, Shai, you, you and I talk a bit about Sajarian, and yes. I ask you about your personal um, take on it. I'm sure a lot of people heard that. If you don't, if you haven't, it's at the end of the episode after Ali Azimi, uh, our, la- our final interview. Um, but Shai, I know Sajarian meant, meant a lot to you personally, both yes, uh, uh, culturally and, and as a musician, too, uh, growing yes. up in Iran. and. Um, and so was there an interview that particularly resonated for you out of all of those? Yes, actually, Arsalan Kamka, yes. he, you know, I, he's great. You know, for people maybe who who uh, doesn't know him very well, he is, you know, I, I can say he's the best uh, barbat player. And Kamka, they, they are like... <laughs> Like Jack's uh, Jackson family, in, no, <laughs> in right, 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 yeah, right. All, they they are all great, and I I was shocked when uh, you said that we got Arsalan Kamkar. Yes. Oh, that was great from yeah. uh, okay. you know I loved Arsalan Kamkar as well. In fact, I was goosebumped <laughs> <laughs> while he was speaking. <laughs> it made me. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean I, I am so uh, grateful to all of those uh, those guests. I mean, top to bottom, Abbas Milani, Babak, uh, uh, Golruch. I thought she was mm-hmm. giving uh, giving us uh, Golruch Aminian, the, the musical uh, perspective. Erfan, uh, coming from where he mm-hmm. comes from musically, mm-hmm. uh, there was just Human Khalat Bari. I thought yes, was so yes, animated, yes. so fantastic. Um, so you can find that on all of our platforms, of course. Um, you know, there's there's something else about this story, though, and that is uh, speaking of the deaths of legends. Two days before mm-hmm. Maestro Shajarian, there was another big loss in the in the, the world of music, a- and I have to tell this story because I love little signposts of the delta between cultures, you know, yes. between uh, uh, different cultures in the world. In this case, of course, Western culture and Iranians, because. 
we share so much together that I sometimes I forget that you guys growing up in Iran and me and say Keon growing up here that there are really moments where I see the divide you know even though we share so much in common including a common shorthand in our language and culture and of Persian culture um, so one of the most consequential rock musicians of the 20th century died right so so i'm in the and of course i'm a musician and a music fan and all that and and uh and a child of the 80s you know and so pop culture of the 80s is my childhood you know so um i'm in my uh I'm in my office here, and and I see the news breaking, and I see it, and I, and I and I scream out, "Oh my God!" Like really loudly, and and uh, and Ponta the artist, and Groovy Shia, and Captain Reza, you know, they're, they're like, "Chishud, what happened?" You know, they're kind of like hearing me in my office, and I come out into our main area here, and I go, "Oh my God!" They're like, "What?" And I and I go, "Eddie Van Halen died, right?" <laughs> and then I look at their faces. Blank. <laughs> complete blank faces. Like they're just like as if I've said <laughs> Pedram the shopkeeper, you know, <laughs> who, you know, you've never met, you know, uh, lost uh, lost a bet, you know. Was that too? You didn't know. I wasn't here. I don't think I was here. Oh, okay. oh. You were what are you talking about? Here. What are you here. talking no, about? I'm serious. I was here. Shereza, that day. you were sitting no, right Roham there. Was I was there. Oh, it was yeah. Roham. Yeah, that was Roham. Yeah. <laughs> Savvy Roham. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. It was no. Roham. I got you two mixed up. <laughs> oh, oh I don't. I don't. I don't. Captain, Captain Reza, Savvy <laughs> Roham, different people. Uh, but anyway, they're all looking at me. And. <laughs> And so, you know, uh, I, and, and I, like I go through them one by one. It's like my life flashing before me. First, I look at Roham and <laughs> with his big CB, you know, and he's just like kind of looking at me like, oh, I don't know who. And, th- and then I go to Ponta and, you know, she just looks like a character on The Simpsons, like her eyes are like blinking. just blinking. Nothing else is moving, you know. And then and then I turn to Shia in this last moment of <laughs> oh, Shia, oh, surely a musician, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. like this guy, you know, Eddie Van Halen. Uh, 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 the guitarist of Van Halen, yeah. monster player, huge rock star, icon of rock pop music, <laughs> a pop culture mainstay in the West. Like if you, you know, he he was because he was good looking, and his wife was Valerie Bertinelli, who was on a big sitcom, and and then even through the '90s and into the 2000s, everybody knows Eddie Van Halen. Even mm. if you're not a fan of the music, you know, Keon, I'm guessing. You're in your I, early 30s, but you know who I Van know Halen who he is. is. Yeah. I, know, I know that song, Jump. Eh, eh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but I that's, know who he is. That's yeah. the least I expect from <laughs> yeah, people, exactly. right? To know that. The bare about. minimum. This guy, for a musician, though, like yeah. this guy is like, he is the, he's the, yeah, I dare say, you know, I don't want to uh, let, let me, he's the Arsalakam car of the oh, guitar, yeah. okay? Oh, he is uh-huh. like a, he is phenomenal. And so I look to Shia and Shia is just like shrugging, you know, no, doesn't, Shia, doesn't know. How could Hillen. you? <laughs> you know, you see this often on a generational level, like a, like a member of Generation Alpha, like yeah. the new generation, or, or even Gen Z, would be confused at what to do with a dial telephone, you know, mm, with the wheel yeah. dial numbers, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and so similarly, that, that delta here is, is so interesting, that, that somebody coming from Iran, even in their, uh, you know, who's not super young mm-hmm. and, and, and was alive during the time of Eddie, yeah. and never even heard the name. And he's a musician. Never, and he's too. a musician. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but... I, 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 Defend yourself. But I bring it up... I, let me bring it around to you, though. Yes, yes. Here's the Persian connection, okay? <laughs> what was Shia, what was Eddie Van Halen a master of? Guitar. Who invented the guitar? Mm. Oh, uh, you ain't yet. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, man. So, so because, I mean, the, the, the tar was officially the, the first, to, you know. So, actually, Eddie Van Halen wouldn't have existed without Iran. You could, <laughs> we could, in, in our way of claiming everything, we I could didn't say. I did know that. The, gu- the guitar like the was tar invented? Was, yeah, wow. the tar was the first version yeah. of a guitar. That's profound. All right, Shia, defend yes. yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> actually, I, 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 I'm bad at names. Then, actually, I, ser- I searched him and. I saw his face and oh that that that, that yeah. guy yeah, yeah. okay but, sure yeah but no but I, but if you say for me who is Eddie Van Halen I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I wasn't a huge fan of his but so I knew sh- you you do know you do of know course him. of yeah. course I knew yeah. Eddie Van Halen and it, the the thing that I found well there was rumor I don't know if there is truth to it maybe Gian would know that would, uh, what is it uh, Michael Jackson song beat it 
Yeah. I heard that he did that song as a favor to Quincy Jones. He went to the studio and laid yeah. it down in half yeah. an hour. Yeah. Biggest hit in the yeah. world. One yeah. of the biggest hits. Yeah, true? he does. He does. It's, it's, it's a legendary guitar solo that yeah. he doesn't yeah. beat it. Yeah. Eddie Van Halen very famously didn't play on a lot of other, other people's music. Mm -hmm. He was like, yes. uh, you know, you'd have to go to Van Halen to hear him play. Mm -hmm. But he he's really like Shia. If you go to YouTube or whatever and want to just watch Eddie Van Halen play live, I mean, yeah, he, was, I was. he was like a magician. Magician on the on the guitar, you know. So that's yes. why I was I was very. Anyway, it was this. It was a funny moment because <laughs> it was this sort of moment of like, what's what's going on here? I'm standing. I'm the show I work on is surrounded by people who don't know who Eddie Van Halen is. But it was uh, it was it was really sweet too. At the same it's time, very and disappointing. I, yeah. um, as speaking of uh, mixing up Roham and and uh, Savvy Roham and Captain Reza, and uh, we we posted our group photo last week. <laughs> And yeah. now people have been asking me who's who in the photo. I mean, one guy on my own Facebook was like, "Which one is you? Which one is you, Jian John?" You know, and I'm like, <laughs> "No, um, is this a real? You know, like my face is on the Facebook. You yeah. know what is? But <laughs> it's right there. So, so I was like, "I'm that one. I'm pointing at like a, I'm, yeah. I'm the the woman in with blonde hair, as <laughs> producer Susan. Uh, but so so." Um, so uh, I haven't been answering because I want people to, uh, and I know on Instagram we posted a couple of pictures and said, well, who is this and, and stuff like that. But there's been some interesting guesses, oh, yeah. mostly around who Captain Reza is. Really? <laughs> there's a lot of confusion, yeah. Yeah. Which 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 yeah. which guy in the photo? So if you want to see this photo, you can go to our website, uh, uh, rookmedia dot com, or we've posted it on Instagram. You have to secretly go into the Instagram. There's a post that just has a thank you on it, and then you look at the second uh, window of that post, and the photo is there uh, on our Instagram or on uh, yeah our website, rookmedia dot com. Any comments about that, Captain Reza? No, no particular comments. I don't like who I was being confused with. But <laughs> who are you being confused with? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's being confused with everybody, so you don't like That's anybody true. on that. <laughs> but isn't that funny how your voice gives people an image? So when they see a picture, they're like, oh, yeah. it must be that person. Yeah. Like, I imagine people think I'm this casual, like, I've talked about smoking weed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't think that I'd be that dressed up young lady that's Oh, actually, together. they were asking, they were like, who is that lady in red dress? Right? <laughs> and, uh, so my voice yeah. doesn't match that, they? apparently. I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, 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 they were yeah. asking. Most people seem to guess it to me. Well, you're outing yourself as who you are in the photo, know, by the way. But yeah, that's okay. Sorry. I think the game is over. Yeah, I think we can. Pretty much. Can, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Everybody thought I was much older. So. Yeah, that's yeah. part of it. Know, People older. think you're like some old executive. I know. I know. I think it's because your name is Captain. That's like, true. Like I had one guy write and say, "Well, I thought he would be like in a suit, like in a, <laughs> a like a, a regulation Proper. military suit or something." Because <laughs> <Like, laughs> I think you know, I just started calling you Captain Reza, right? But but people think that maybe you used to be a captain. <laughs> In the Navy or something, okay. and then you've come General. to work on Rook, you know. Uh, we need former to get him it's like you know how the people still get called General yeah, after true. they're no longer yeah, working in the service. Through Captain Reza, you know. We need to get him a captain hat. Actually, that did you ever do Sadwazi? No, no, you no, escaped no, before. I escaped yeah, yeah. before yeah. that. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Can it be a pirate hat? Just wear it in studio. <laughs> no, no, wear it in studio every time. <laughs> uh -huh. Ahoy there, matey. All right. Well, uh, enough hijinks. So we've got I, we've got a lot to uh, of letters to get oh through God, to the. In fact, I know. Oh, you had to narrow it down yeah, to just a few because just, mm. uh, for the Shajarian tribute episode, we're going to get to that. Uh, but let's get to our featured guest. Okay, Captain Reza, Groovy Shia, the fabulous Kian. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, listen, on the heels of the French Open uh, this past weekend, there are very few athletes in the world, let alone any of Iranian descent, who can claim to have made it into the top rankings of professional tennis internationally. There are even fewer who can cite the fact that they have been number 15 in the world. But my guest today has exactly this distinction. Aravon Rezaei is a French-Iranian tennis player who made a huge splash as a strong teenage tennis phenom in the early 2000s and then rose to the top rankings of pro tennis by her early 20s, defeating top players on the WTA tour such as Justine Hennen, Venus Williams, and Maria Sharapova. She also won gold medals in Iran competing at the Muslim Women's Olympic Games. But like most things in life, what can seem dreamy from the outside can be more complex and fraught with challenges in reality. Aravon had to overcome the hurdle of coming from a modest family in a rich person's sport. The 
difficulties of racism as a young player of Iranian descent in France, and the issue of a volatile father who was her coach for most of her career. All that and sacrificing her youth almost entirely for the purposes of a sport can be quite a burden. As such, Aravon stepped away from the game for a while in the last decade, much to the sadness of her fans around the world, including in Iran. But now she is back and focused on tennis again in her early 30s. And now she's armed not just with her powerful tennis swing, but with perspective and wisdom that comes with some distance and growth. And right now, Aravon Rezaï joins me from Saint-Étienne, France. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Bonjour, salam. <laughs> 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 yes, you can say everything you want. <laughs> um, how are you doing? Great, great. Thank you. Um, happy to be to be with you and uh, and share my story with you. Are, are we taking you away from training? Are you? Were you just training, or where are you right now? Well, actually, um, actually, today I, I had a day off. But uh, usually I train every day and um, even Sunday. So, but actually I'm, I'm, I'm in my car. You're in your car? Yes, I do. I do. Why, why, why are you in your car? Well, I'm in my car because uh, I prefer to be in the car because at home I have a parrot. And my parrot <laughs> just keeps speaking Farsi all the time. And <laughs> that's why I'm in my car. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. You're so if we. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were talking, I think we're zooming with you. If you were zooming from from your home right now, your parrot would be talking in the background in Farsi. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, and what would is it a he or a she? Oh, she. And what she would, keeps talking. What would she be saying? Well, my name, and she was. She's always like repeating what I'm saying all day long. Uh, <laughs> I know it all in Farsi, and that's, that's so she doesn't speak French or or English. No, she doesn't. She, Only in Persian. She's a she's a very nationalistic Persian uh, parent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, I have two. I have two dog. Uh, I have two dogs, and I speak with with them in Farsi. So, yeah. <laughs> you do. You don't. You don't. But, but I mean, what is your? Uh, uh, you you were born in France. You've grown up there. Yes. You've spent your entire life, in fact, in France. I would think that your first language would be French. Yes, or is it Farsi? Well, first, well I would say my first language is 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 Farsi because I uh, I was speaking at home with my parents since I I, I was born, and I, I just remember I, I always speak Farsi, and I learned French at school when I started to go to school. So, but I was born in France, so. Yeah, I, uh, I, I always speak Farsi with my family, and then when I'm outside, I, I speak French. So with the dogs, you don't say "assez toi," you don't say "sit," you say "beshin." No, <laughs> I say "beshin," voice <laughs> <laughs> or or, uh, or uh, "bienja." Actually, my dog's name is uh, Kushi, Kushi, because always she was hiding, and I was like "Kushi, Kushi, <laughs> Kojasi." So, and I I keep repeating Kushi, and I said, okay, I choose Kushi. The, this is already not at all what I thought we were going to be talking about. But but uh, but just <laughs> yeah. but just to continue for a second, <laughs> how does the parrot, the Farsi parrot, the very uh, Persian parrot, get along with the dogs? Well, no, they are in different separate places, so they oh. are they're not getting. Uh, well together and my <laughs> okay. dog is pretty you know they're they're afraid of the parrots because the parrots is very very aggressive and uh, likes her territory and yeah i just leave her alone and i don't bother her the parrot is aggressive yes i see it sounds like you live in a complex where there's all these different zones where the dogs are in one area and the parrots in another area <laughs> you have to manage all the animals yeah <laughs> yeah, well, I'm an animal lover, and I love all kind of animal, and I just love, you know, the nature, the forest, and and I I live in Saint Etienne, and Saint Etienne is a is a is a town that, you know, you have a lot of mountains and and forests and, and national parks, and so yeah, I I'm pretty I I'm getting along well with with animals and and other other type or horse or whatever donkey or <laughs> or uh, yeah right. but, do you do you come across a lot of donkeys yeah we have a lot here <laughs> <laughs> 
I was joking. You actually do? You have donkeys ro- roaming around? No, no, and said, I don't. No, no, <laughs> no, no you don't. don't okay, you're donkeys. joking. Uh, well, uh, yeah. and, and just to, because I'm a dog lover, I have a, a French bulldog. Uh, what kind of dogs do you have? Well, we call, I think in America, we call a boo dog. The small boo dog. It says Spitz Pomeranian. Ah. The little fluffy. Oh, tiny you know. dogs. Is it just yes. one dog? Two. Two dogs. Two. They, they're both Pomeranians? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Male and female. All right. Uh, we've cleared this all up. Well, maybe they can meet my French bulldog Oogie one day. He's probably <laughs> one day. He'll he'll have to meet the aggressive parrot because he thinks he's a tough guy. But you know, um, so uh, but he he doesn't understand Farsi as much. Uh, when when I have friends coming and saying Beshin, I'm like he doesn't he knows sit he doesn't know Beshin, but he kind of gets the tone. Um, listen, um, and and speaking of which, we we will do this in English. You haven't done a lot of interviews in English, but so if you want to lapse into Persian or French. At any point, you're welcome to do so. But I think your your English is fabulous. So thanks for doing this in English. Yeah, thank you. Yes, actually, um, yeah, my English is not as good as 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 yours because well, I never learned really to to speak English at school. I just learn on you know on traveling and being on the court with people, and I just learn English like that. So I never had the opportunity to learn perfectly my to be. F- fully good <laughs> by the so, way yeah i try my i will try my best by the by the way when 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 players at the international level when you've got uh justin henin and maria sharapova who's from russia and venus williams who's from the from the u.s and everybody's meeting on the court is it basically standard that everybody speaks english to each other well usually those players when they come from i mean sharapova maria sharapova lived in america right, for right, many right, years right, right. so um yeah we have most of the players they know english because they 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 maybe they were born somewhere but they grew up somewhere else or in america in florida and um but lately we have asian players they 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 for many years they struggle with the language and french people they do too <laughs> and uh and uh, actually, Rafael Nadal for many years had, uh, had issues with interviews after matches because he, he couldn't speak perfectly f- English. Yes. So he had um, a, a, a person just sitting there during interview to translate uh, what the journalists were, were talking or asking questions. And lately, he, he learned how to speak English. But uh, it's, it's, um, tennis is a sport that we are on the top level very early in our age, I would say 18, 17, right. uh, 19. So really we don't, we don't get to an age that we, we, we are mature enough to learn a language or to do something else on the side of tennis. You know, we we don't have much time for well, that. Well, you've done pretty well. I mean, you're a, a, a French girl who has a Farsi speaking parrot, and a, 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 and you're doing interviews <laughs> oh in English, God. so it's not so bad. By the way, you mentioned Rafa Nadal, who just won the yes. French Open this weekend. By the way, yes, I guess he's a friend of yours, or you guys trained together. There's a bunch of pictures I, I found of you two. Uh, you've you've or you competed together, or what? What's the relationship mm. there? No, well, Rafa, I know him since I'm, um, I probably say, um, 13 years old because, you know, European Championship, we, we're, he has one, he, he's one year older than me. So we travel a lot together. We do, we did a European Championship together with other countries, Italy, Spain, France. Usually we are always together on the team. And I, as far as I remember, we played a lot of tournaments together uh, at the same time, same, same places. And uh, it was him and Djokovic and Del Potro and many other players in my age. We, we travel a lot together at that time. But uh, with Rafa, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of him because he's, um, he's a super champion for me. And I always respected his career, and I had the opportunity to to get to know him and talk to him and see his training, and actually even to hit with him many times. And uh, and yeah, but we never compete together. But we we had a friendly, uh, I would say, uh, relationship 
like uh, like le- yeah like uh, like players you know like players playing athletes and right, right. and respecting each other so you're but, you're kind yeah, of like a you're a female rafa to a certain extent because he's known as a real power hitter right isn't he yes and that's he your is, and yeah. that's your greatest asset as well or one of them yeah yeah no, I, i'm i'm a i'm a player that hits very hard the ball and uh, I always watch men's matches. I never watch a woman's. I like to watch ma- male because I learn a lot from male matches, and and it's it really inspires me to to play better. Interesting. So and Rafa is one of his game that I like. But before Rafa, I was I was uh, watching Andre Agassi a lot. So my 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 game and my type of game is based more on Andre Agassi's game. <laughs> well, listen, let's get into your story because I, I, I know there are a lot of uh, Iranians around the world, I'm sure a lot of French nationals too, who are very proud <laughs> of you, but may not know about all you've been through, Ereban. And you know, you mentioned Andre Agassi. Um, yeah. I had the chance to interview Andre Agassi about 10 years ago, and, and I'll be honest, it was quite heartbreaking uh, to hear he was, he was very honest. I was a great, I really appreciated talking to him, but, but it was heartbreaking to hear him say he hates tennis. He does not like tennis. He said the sport that he had given everything to was something he was quite bittersweet about because of all that it had taken from him um, and, and, and the pressure that he had felt from his father and the family. And I sense you are somewhat in the same position uh, as your hero, Andre Agassi, as someone who has excelled remarkably at this sport, but you don't always love it. Would that be correct? Well, yes, it, it is co- it, it is correct because, well, I would say everybody's every tennis players they are not in the same situation. But for my situation, yes, I'm I'm a person that I can say that I don't I don't like tennis. It's not it's not a sport that I will do on my Sunday or I will enjoying the. I'm not enjoying playing tennis. Uh, what I enjoy it's it's really competing, uh, winning matches, and to be able to win matches, we need to train hard. So we suffer a lot on court. We suffer a lot outside of the court. So all that, you know, it's it, it hurts. It hurts a lot. You have to keep fighting. You have to find, you know, you have to find solution. You have to find um, power and strength to. To win matches and to keep to keep winning. So, uh, but you, but do you, the, but do you understand how the, extraordinary it might be for someone to hear you say, uh, I, "I, you don't like tennis." I mean, there's this. It's, it's partly because we're used to a lot of athletes, you know, uh, Michael Jordan or saying, "All I've ever wanted to do is play basketball." So now I'm a basketball star, and so. To hear an athlete like yourself or Andre Agassi uh, be carrying this burden of saying I don't I don't even I don't like this, um, it, it's 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 difficult. It's it's hard to hear. Well, because yes, because I, I I didn't choose to play tennis. They choose it for me. Ah. They already made my life to be like that. They already made my career before I was born. They, my dad had the the idea of making a champion, a tennis champion, before I was born. So if and and so yeah, that's that's a, a, a what it, what is incredible is to have a goal and to reach that goal and that's for me it's extremely extraordinary because y- you can it's like you jump on a mountain uh, without any anything you know you just jump and you don't know where you get and where you are it's it's just you jump. And that's what my father did. He jumped with no clue, <laughs> but he jumped. And we get there. We we arrive to we, we reach our goal. But okay, and, this is, let, let me let me take this step by step because this yeah. is this is <laughs> such an interesting twist in your story. Growing up, uh, you know, most Iranian parents, as you probably know, want the kid to be an engineer or a doctor exactly. or or astrophysicist. <laughs> Uh, and and the kid may want to be an athlete. In your case, by the way, I know that one of your things that you always wanted to be was an astrophysicist. In your case, yes. it was your father who was encouraging you to go into tennis. So tell us how this happened for you. 
Well, I um, I, I have an older brother that was on the court already playing before me. But uh, before my, my, my brother, Anoush, my brother, he used to be a, a good tennis player, but but not professional. Uh, I, re I remember uh, 1983, uh, Yannick Noah won Roland Garros. And, um, the French Open. And my father, yeah. in French Open, yes, yeah. French Open. Before you are born. And then, yeah, yeah yes. like I would say four years before I, I, I were born. And then, uh, yes, he's, he saw Yannick Noah jumping on his father's arms and then winning Roland Garros French Open and then he said okay that's the that's the sport i choose for my son so then it's like a virus you know he the virus went in his brain and never have been out <laughs> for 30 years so he had a, a goal is to to his son to be a champion so from that moment uh, he started to train my brother every day every day since he was uh three years old yes three years old he started to play tennis and then every day and then and then in 87 1987 uh, I, I was born <laughs> so then I the next five years I I was like taking the ball on the court being on the court and um, and my father didn't wear I mean, my father didn't pay attention to me. He was always on the court training my brother. And then, you know, the relationship between father and daughter is very special. So it's more fusional, more, um, you know, more, more. Uh, I would say, is is different, you know. Father and son is different, but father and daughter, it's something, something else. And then I realized that my father didn't even pay attention to me. So I decided to take a racket one day and just hit the ball back the 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 ball of my brother when he was hitting I just hit him back <laughs> and then he realized that oh I, I had a I had the talent and I everything every day that I was spending on the court cleaning the ball or taking the ball and I was just learning uh, everything he was saying to my brother so I start to play from that day every day and i and my father realized very quick that i had a very good results and i was beating all the player so then we decided i mean from that moment i was probably 10 years old Agavan, why then, why were you so good i mean you're pretty you're you're, you're pretty small in stature uh, i, I yeah. know you're known now as this intense performer with a lot of power but as a 10 year old why why were you suddenly so good at tennis do you know um maybe i would say my father he's a good coach <laughs> but why yeah, were you better than your brother coach. like what was your natural talent that you had that 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 seemed to uh, that you you excelled my fighting spirits uh -huh, i would say uh -huh. i'm a fighter i'm my mental my my yeah the 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 way i i like to win the 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 way i like to compete the way i fight on the court i would say it's mental and you've always been that way. Theory. You were you were like that as a kid. Yes, always. <laughs> Not only in tennis. Ah. In every any any kind of. I played a lot of chess at that time, and I always wanted to win. <laughs> so I could I could die, but I, I refused to lose. <laughs> that was my. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was my way of thinking. So so you you very quickly become this. Um, little young star in tennis and then in your early teens you know this becomes something of a of a family business let me let me just go, go back a little bit because yeah I, I, I mentioned this in the in the in the introduction but tennis is from what I understand I mean all that I've ever learned about it it is a class oriented sport it costs a lot to play it costs a lot to train it costs a lot to tour if yes. you want to be at the top levels if you want to be one of the best and you come from a relatively modest family, right? You don't come from a, a lot of wealth. Your, your family wasn't super rich yes. growing up. So exactly. you become this tennis player. And is it is it true that the, 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 the family basically kind of builds a business around you? Yes. They, 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 I mean, my father was my coach, but then quickly 
I had my brother as a hitting partner because uh, when you play tennis, you need a partner. But my brother was part of my 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 project, my my goal, and that business. And and my mother, my mother uh, for many years she was a, a, a medical student for many years, and she had to retire because of me because she was pregnant of me <laughs> so uh then she decided to stop everything and to follow me and to uh start to do recover with me and stretching she was kind of my physiotherapist and so i had my father my mother my brother and me and i have a lot of, a, a little uh, a younger sister which she 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 had to do she had to sacrifice a bit her parents because she was alone many many times many years and she yeah she misses her parents and she, it's a kind of sacrifice she make for me so so but, let me let me get this straight so by the by the early 2000s you're you're in your mid teens and yes the and and i mean this is just a it, you know, this is a lot of pressure to put on a, yes. a young girl i mean you are you are basically not just feeling the pressure to be a good tennis player not just being the pressure to be a good daughter but you're carrying the financial pressure yes. of the family Were you, exactly how, how was that for you well uh, how how can i explain um, when you're young, you don't, you you have no choice. You have to move on. Um, I I can see how how much my parents they were they were spending time and and money for my career for my best. I couldn't disappoint in them. I I, I had to do my best. But uh, I knew that I was the only one that could bring the money at home. And if I had if I there are, there were some tournaments that we had money to go, but we had no money to go back to come back, and I had to win the tournaments. Wow. And then and then and they they were players much stronger than me. So then at that time at that point it's a it's a survival process. So you have to win. It's not is it's not fun. It's just you have to win to to eat or to come back. So. And so if, you, if, so if you don't win, you are feeling, again, not just the pressure that you've disappointed yourself as a, as a competitor, not just the pressure that you're, you've disappointed your coach, but you're worrying about that you don't win the prize money, too, and, uh, that, yes. that the family needs. Exactly. Wow. That's what I, and then when you go on the court with that goal and you know what, what, what is the game it is, it is about, then you you fight you just go to to you just go on the court and you kill your your opponent you have no choice you have to because i because i train so much i train eight hours a day every day and then i had the opportunity to to win the tournament so it's it was a matter of just being stronger and just fight and and that that was that that's why i was better than everyone because I train much more than everyone else, and then I had that uh, pressure that the others didn't have, and and that's probably it's a, it's a pressure, but it's a it's a strain at, at the time, you know. How how it's, would you a, how would you suspect your family would tell this story? Because I I, I I guess the inverse of this, or the the opposite story, or from their perspective, it could be. We saw some talent in our daughter. She seemed to really take to tennis. So we sacrificed everything to make sure she was a champion. Would they say that? Yeah. Of course they do. But, uh, you know, Iranian parents, they, they always do that. But, uh, yeah, but it, it, it's okay. I'm fine with that. And, and of course, they sacrifice and they are right to say it. It's okay. My my goal is to see the results. I don't care what how people see or how people talk. Or my goal was to to win and to be different. I remember when I was on on school, and uh, my my teacher. You know when you're young and the teacher always ask, uh, "What do you want to do later on?" And you and and 
my my uh, schoolmates they were saying oh i want to be um, a doctor the other were was saying oh i want to be i don't know um a soccer player or whatever and when it comes to me i said i want to be unique hmm. and all the kids all the kids they were laughing at me i said oh it's not a job it's it's <laughs> stupid <laughs> Yeah. And I said, I don't care. What I want to do is to be different than anyone but that's, else. But here's the thing. You were different. And it wasn't always easy to be different, too, because I know exactly. that beyond the other stuff we've talked about in terms of the financial pressures and the class elements and the be, being pushed into tennis and all that, you also faced some racism as a young athlete in France. Which exactly. It, it, it's exactly. surprising to me because you're – you're, you know, you you born in France, and and you know, uh, you're this pretty girl. You, I, 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 you're good at tennis. I would have thought, okay, maybe you could just get away with this in terms of, but I guess folks would see you as Middle Eastern or would see you as Iranian. Exactly. And, and how did it play out? What would they say? What would they do? Well, um, you know, I I had a lot of um, moments uh, that I felt very bad because. Yeah, uh, tennis. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a tough sport because we are, we are, well, we are Iranian, but in France, uh, th there are not big community and um, Iranian community, and uh, and especially in our 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 town, and um, well, people think thought that we were Arab Arabic or. Algerian or Moroccan or ah. and they, they thought that we were like Arabic and they they don't like you know the French people they are they have problem with Algerian Moroccan because of the history before and and um, and yeah they were comparing us to them and and many times I had the for example I had to the, the Federation French Federation had to they have to help me all the players they i don't know they get some money and me i i never had any help financial help because uh, i was training with my father because we were not part of the like the the french federation they always protect the french you want wait, wait a minute and but you others, were, weren't you a were, french but you're a french citizen are you not Yes, unfortunately, yes. But uh, you know, I'm not blondie or you know, it's different, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And <laughs> and well, my father, when you look at him, you can really see he's a Persian that you can <laughs> you can <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> right, so right. you can really see that you know, strong voice, strong look. <laughs> How did you react to that at the time, Erevan? Did we, 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 did you? resent the fact that you were iranian did you were you angry at your parents for being iranian or or, or did you no did you, not at all you, no, no. you understood what was happening you understood that this well was, i was i you know i hate i hate when something is unfair and i i um unfortunately i i experienced a lot of situation that it was unfair and um when i see well when i was a victim of that I mean, people, they were cursing at me sometimes and they were saying a lot of bad things. Um, and, um, well, that gives me more energy and, and power to working harder and to win matches. And then, mm. and then those people, they were, like, treating me bad. The year after, the two years after, they come back and say, oh, you remember... I was one of your fans or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right, and right, right. I said, okay. When you start winning, yeah, they right. think, they, they, and, I, and I bet you suddenly became French too to a lot of people once yes, you started exactly. winning, right? Yeah. Exactly. And then slowly I became a Frenchy girl with Iranian origin. And then, <laughs> right. yeah, it was, it was funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, uh, by the way, you don't, you don't seem shy on the court. I mean, there was this period where you were competing in these, like you had some flashy outfits, gold outfits. Did, 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 <laughs> yeah. did you like the attention that came with that? or Because or, oh, your style got quite a lot of attention in, or, or for, for a while as well. Yeah. Um, you know, um, my friend, she was a, a designer and she was Iranian and um, she was a great designer and I wanted to help her to have a brand iranian persian brand to be part of the tennis world mm -hmm. 
and um, we share a lot about the style, the the design that I would like to have. So we had a common, uh, you know, uh, agreement to help each other, and um, and yeah, actually, my two favorite color was gold and black, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and she made a, a design that I would say, okay, let's do it, let's go. But no, I'm not shy because I like to be different. I like to play different. I like to, and then it was like a Persian touchy I wanted to show, you know, because mm. we we I'm the only I would say Middle Eastern player, and um, and I, I wanted to be a bit different because we have a lot of Russian, we have a lot of American, but you know a bit a girl like uh, like you know dark hair. Uh, brown skin and uh, and w we don't have on the tennis on we didn't have on the tennis word and I, I wanted to be a bit different. You know, so, I, I love this. I love I love the fact <laughs> that no, really that that you even though you were sort of made fun of or or people said uh, offensive things towards you as a kid because you were different. Not only do you make it through that, but you. You're, you embrace being different. I mean, that's what we hope that every kid can do, but somehow you found your way to do that. Um, and, and it's got to be, I mean, it. you know, I always think about tennis players as a, the only sport I ever excelled in it was, it was, it was soccer, football, and, I, and so yeah. I, I'm always playing with a team. And I think about a tennis player out on that court by yourself, uh, there, it, it's inevitably got there's got to be so much pressure let, let alone all the other things that we're placing on this and then to put yourself out there and and to create the conditions where you're you're even more unique uh it speaks to uh, a real confidence that you had when when you're still a teenager you you also win two tennis gold medals at this um Muslim women Olympic Games uh, that happened in yes. Iran. What what was it like to compete and win in Iran for you? Well, um, I remember uh, when I had the opportunity to go to Iran and to play there with my father. Um, yeah, I mean, people, they were interesting how powerful, how strong I, I, I was playing. And, and they quickly they 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 recognize me and they say oh we we really want you to play for that event for that olympic game and obviously i never had the opportunity to play because i knew that it was an event and, and not a, a tournament and i said well let's let's experience that because uh you know i i, I always play in, play in france i always i i felt that i'm i'm french but to play in Iran, it was totally different, uh, different experiences, you know, to play only in indoor between women and all that was totally, I mean, funny at that time, but now it's, it's less funny. <laughs> but uh, funny when you're 14 years old, it's funny, you're inside, you experience, you play with women, you enjoy the, the, the team. But... Um, yeah, I mean, if I had to do it again, I would do it. But obviously, it's a good memory that that I play there. And I enjoy. I mean, and in my career, I can say I won two medal gold uh, in Iran. But uh, what I want to win is French Open. <laughs> That's uh, gotcha, more for interesting sure. for me. <laughs> did Did you feel? Um I guess around that time, especially as as you begin to ascend into the top rankings in tennis too, um, in in around a little later than that, did you yeah. start to feel like you have a? I mean, I, I can only imagine you had a. There's a couple of people on the Rook team who were growing up in Iran at that time who say they remember knowing about you, hearing about you, like you became a star in Iran. Would yeah. you were you aware of that? Would you hear that when you when you would go and compete in these games? Did you know that you had all these fans in Iran? Uh, well, um, I realized later on that I had a lot of fans. Not on that moment because I wasn't on, on the social media. I mean, Instagram it's less than ten years. Facebook probably a bit more than ten years, and I wasn't on, on the social media. It's uh, just later, lately, when I went back to Iran and, and I, I had an Instagram, people knew my name 
um when they say my name they they, they heard my name they, they know me but they but they don't know my face it's funny <laughs> because they had no clue what i'm looking like i'm look like it's <laughs> it's funny but they know my name they know it's aravan rezaid playing tennis but they don't they don't have idea how i look like so lately i realized how much fun i have in iran and i try actually uh since i have instagram to share my story my life with them and speak farsi with them because i like to also share what i'm living and share my experience my 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 the way i i improve and the way i i had to reach that level where i what i have to do to go through that you know it's yes. it's important for them to know because most of them they say oh you live in france it's easy for you to to reach your you know your goal here in iran we can't it's difficult and it's not as easy but even here i i i had a hard time to to be a champion so anywhere in any world you when you 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 want you have a goal you 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 want something you can you can have it it depends how much you know intensity yes. how much uh your determination your 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 strength it is <laughs> to get you know, there this coming from you is important because because i i think your story is quite inspirational at this point now but <laughs> even if we had spoken five years ago i mean you did have a downfall you went through a very difficult period and yeah. right before that, so, you know, uh, just to catch people up who don't know the exact story, by October 2010, I mean, you become the number 15 player in the world. You've defeated yes. some very big names. You come close to beating Serena Williams in this big match. I remember that one. D did you have any idea at that stage that that things may unravel for you, that things could go bad, or were you just on top of the world? No, um, for me... Uh, when I won Madrid or I won those big tournaments, I, I had no clue that was probably the last year that I will compete. No, um, actually, I didn't think like that because I had uh, uh, my goal was to be number one in yes. the world. So uh, I was on on the track to uh, I beat all the, the top players, and I, I always, you know, work hard for that. At the moment, you know, when you when you are in a family business and you were talking before just early in, in the interview, the pressure of the family. Yes. At some point, the pressure has to go out somehow. Yes. And then the pressure was stronger, more, more harder. And the, the family business, uh, it wasn't for me as important as it was. It, it, it was more like I, I was thinking more about myself. Uh, and at that moment, I wasn't that happy. I had a, a trophy, but I wasn't happy in my life. So, and so, I give on. So, let, let, let's be specific about this, if you don't mind. Tell tell yeah. me about this relationship with your father as a coach, because he is known, or was known at least, as very volatile. He could be very difficult. I know things are different now, and you guys have reconciled. But but take yeah. me back. When did that? When did the way he acted start to become an issue for you? Well, since I was a kid, it was like that. But, you know, when I start to reach the top level, I really felt the, the pressure of my father. Um, and then, you know, when you get higher, you want more. Yeah. You want more and more and more. It's, it's always like that. Yeah. And, uh, and then so the media was there. Uh, the financial thing, money was there a lot of topics you know on it, it, it was i don't know how to explain it's like you know you have a, a, a big balloon and suddenly everything explodes because yeah. it's too much yeah and then at some point when i reach a, a, a high level i realized that i needed a, a new coach and um, and then my father really didn't accept that so well, the, well, there's the a well, the, 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 there's a big incident yeah. that happens. I mean, there's a few, but there's one at the Australian Open in 2011, and exactly. your your father is accused of violence and threatening your boyfriend at the time, and the WTA <laughs> bans him from the tour indefinitely pending investigation. The Victoria Police are called in. W w what can you tell us about that time? 
Well, the media talks many things, say many things, but most of the time is not true. Okay. So, what's true yeah. about that? Which what what was true and what's not true? Yeah. Well, yeah. At that time, I um, I had some problem with my father. We argue. I argue with my father, and then uh, and then yeah, I had a boyfriend at that moment, but my father knew my boyfriend, and then. It wasn't the, the issues, the boyfriend wasn't the issue, but the media decided to include my boyfriend inside and, and it wasn't it, it, it wasn't the, 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 the problem at that moment. But uh, the problem was I, I argued with my father and I decided to split the work, the, the coaching. I split with my father, I said, okay, you're not my coach anymore. And then I decided to leave. So. Uh, you know, it, it didn't go well. <laughs> it right. didn't go well, right. and then we we argue, we fight, and then I stopped there. And then the media decided to make a big, big. But big was deal. he? What did he get banned? Uh, he get banned. Yes, he did. Because why, why did he get he, banned? He he got banned. Yeah, because um, they were making okay, your your threat, your threat, but by, by your father, you need to be protected and. And then at the moment, my father was pretty, pretty, you know, uh, pretty hard with me. And then I, I didn't want to play tennis anymore. Yeah. I decided to just stop a bit to to put my career on hold. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't play uh, free, free in the mind. I couldn't be happy on the court. And I decided just to stop a bit to recover from all this pressure. And then to play it to come back. Okay. But did you did you did did you end up suing him or is that a I, I can't tell if that's no I didn't no no, no I didn't sue some, him okay, no okay that's that, that's a made up story. In the media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> well, who uh, I I I wanted to say something. Yeah. Which family don't have issues? Of course. We no, we, it, we all yeah. do, and unfortunately, I was I was on my highest ranking yeah. and the newspaper the journalists they were you know hoping or uh, looking for a micro or a fight to to make it big you know believe so, me i get it i for sure i, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about listen uh, uh but the but the two reality is you're at the top of your game as an athlete as you say and you make this decision around 2011 2012 you're only 24 years old to, that that you want to take a break you have also told me that that you had to actually stay on for a while though because you had pressure of sponsors who so even when you want to take a break then and get out of this cage that you're in you you have to continue because you've got You've got to live up to the to, to, to agreements that you've made with sponsors. Is that true? Well, yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I had like um, we say um, um, a guarantee tournament. I had to when you enter a tournament uh, the year before, uh, you have to you have to. Ex I mean, imagine you enter a tournament. You have to you have to tell them they pay you to come to the tournament. Right. Uh, some some tournament and. They make a lot of um, uh, advertising right. on you, so right. you have to be there when you play. And for uh, a, a year, approximately a year, I I had to keep playing because uh, they were advertising, and then I I had to play. I had sponsor, and I have a contract, and they 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 didn't push me to play, but I I felt that I, it was unfair yeah. to them to not keep playing. And I always fair to people, to my sponsor, and I always being correct. So I kept I keep playing a bit, even though I wasn't I wasn't fully uh, focused on my career. But I I just being on the court and try to to do my best on the court. But I wasn't mentally there. And you you've already made the case that part of the part of the, the the magic of being a top player the way you the the, the heights that you you reach and that you've reached yeah. are is mental acuity is, is is mental fortitude being strong exactly. mentally so when things are falling apart behind you uh getting on that court alone and and being number one becomes that much more uh of a mountain to climb right yeah you know being at, at the moment my tennis career wasn't as much as uh, it wasn't important for me 
my health, my mental health was more important. And I moved to Spain. I moved to Spain yes. for four years. Actually, my my ex boyfriend uh, was Spanish, and then I, I went there and I keep focus on my personal life. And then I said always, uh, I, I'm gonna come back on the tour. I'm gonna I'm gonna start again the practice in one month, two months. I, I keep push. I keep pushing the, the, the training and I realized that after seven years, <laughs> I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't on the court. <laughs> so, but I, I really enjoy working on myself to see the person I am, who I am. And, um, and yeah, during, during probably four years, I moved to Spain. You know, it's amazing that you, that you made that decision, that you had the, uh, the strength of character to say, no, I'm going to step away and I'm going to, you know, I, I know it couldn't have been easy. I'm sure there were some arguments. With, uh, what what was it like to be away from your family after having uh, not just obviously being close to your family, but but being at the center of this family business for, for all of your life until this point where you go to Spain? What was that like for you? Well, you know, I, I decided to not play because I, I I don't like to lose first. So I'm, I'm a person that when I go on a court, I go to win. So I knew that I wasn't training good enough or uh, enough to to compete. So I prefer to, to be away from the tournament. And when I put a step on the court, it's to win. That's why I decided to not play. To I, I don't like to be half ready i like to be fully right, ready right, right. and 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 when you're a center of attention of a family and suddenly you're alone um that was a decision that i i, I wanted to I, I wanted to be alone it was mm. it, it was my decision i wanted to be away from everyone from everybody that knew me on on court or outside of the tennis court were there times when you were away um, from everybody and everything, as you say, where you thought, I'm not going to go back to tennis? This is it? I'm done with that? Never, never, never. Uh, actually, in 2017, yeah, or I don't remember, 16 or 17, uh, I made a decision uh, and then I went uh, to a road that calls uh, Compostela Road. It's a it's a Christian road actually uh, that people go to pray and and start from France and they walk till Portugal. So you have to cross all the France, mm. go to Spain, cross the Spain, and go to Portugal. And that and I walk probably uh, six hundred kilometers alone. Wow! With, with my bag, and I went uh, through all the France and Spain. And uh, because I needed to find myself, who I, who I am. Wow! And um, I didn't know anything about this. Does anybody know uh, about this? <laughs> does your yeah. parent? Does your parent know about this? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They know, uh, and they, yeah, of course they know. But you know, in that road, you're alone. You're alone, and you walk, and you're in the nature. And then I walk for yeah, seven hundred, six hundred kilometer. And then I walk probably for months and I just keep walking, walking, walking. And at that moment, I realized after my, after my walk, I realized that uh, I wanted to start professionally again. So wait, wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hang on a second. Yeah. You walked for <laughs> 600 kilometers. So yes. how, how many days, how long did it take you? It's ter approximately I walk between twenty five to thirty kilometers a day. So, okay, so this like it, it was about a month you were doing this. Yes, yes, and a bit more than a month. Where, and you, you, with a backpack. With a backpack, exactly. And and you you did this totally alone. You weren't with friends. You weren't alone. No, no, alone, alone. <laughs> and did you? Would you stop at? Where, where would you stay at night? Well, it, it's a it's a pretty popular uh, road, so okay. there are places for the um, 
for the people they walk and there are like uh, rooms or hotel mini mini apartments and you walk until you're tired and then you stop and you you sleep you eat there and you go the next day you wake up and you go and you walk and so uh, at the uh, of course like the everybody listening right now wants to do this walk i want to go do the walk <laughs> <laughs> or sort of actually if i could do it less than a month that would be so so at the end of the, the this walk i mean um is it obviously it's kind of meditative right like you, as you're walking you're thinking we can you're, say yes yeah it's like a, a meditate a bit and then i focus on 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 me on actually i focus on my life I, I focus on who i am uh, the, the oxygen that i was breathing the the nature the trees the 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 bird the flower every every little thing i was paying attention of the beauty of the of this world and then you realize that in this world you're you're nothing you're just a, a, a human and then you can die the next day and and, that, that's and, by, it. and by the way so, let me let me let me just put this into perspective <laughs> So by this time, you're a woman in your late 20s who has, up until the last couple of years, spent yeah. your entire life, almost every moment of your entire life, focused on this career that you've had since you were a little kid with your family around you, with TV cameras around you, with uh, yeah. uh, the tennis courts around you. And, and that's, that's been all that you've been able to do. And suddenly you're alone with a knapsack walking. Um, what's one of the biggest things you learned about yourself on that walk? Um, I would say how strong mentally I, I am. How that I could pass all the limits that I can imagine. Or um, I would say how m my strength is to remember from where I, I, I came from. That's, that's the point, where I come from, where my family came from, my grandfather, and, and, and back and back. So I have to understand all my generation story. And then one, once you realize all this, all the, 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 where they went through and what they have to do, to to keep living and why i i ask myself why i'm living why i'm alive why you know you know it's it's um the, you ask yourself many questions yes. uh, when you do, you walk and when you walk it's like you you, you ask yourself like um life questions you know yes. universal question or about universe about whatever everything you 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 put on the table and you say okay who i am and who i am is is aravon <laughs> and and what i want is to be a champion and then now i'm ready to go on now i'm ready to move on and 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 now i and after that walk i realize who who really i was and i am and and from that point i put everything uh i i do everything in my in in with all my power to with all my strength to come back on the top level so from that from that walk from that i um, i would say that path after after at the end i i knew what i, I wanted to do and for who, the rest of my life who was the first person you told uh i would say uh, I, I mean, no one, I just, I just, I don't know. I just react. I just did what I have to do. When did you tell and your, then, when did you tell your parents? When did you tell your dad? No, I didn't, I didn't tell my parents. They don't even know that I did that. I mean, they know that I, I did that road, but they, they never thought that it, it's because of that road that I made a decision. No, huh. um, I did that road and then I went to Paris actually. <laughs> I mean, at that moment I was in I was in Saint Etienne and then when I made that decision, I I said okay, I'm ready. I took a, 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 my car and a bag and I went to Paris and start to organize my team. 
<laughs> without oh. my family. <sighs> so they were they were not part of my career. I thought I thought to myself, okay, I want to start again but they're not going to be part of my career. I'm going to do another career without them just because I want to do it. I, I, I decide to, to start that career with new people, with new coach, with new team. And how's it going? <laughs> for, for the first uh, six months, e extremely bad. <laughs> I would say. It was it, it was extremely bad because I realized how far I was from the level <laughs> that I, I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So I realized that physically I was extremely, extremely late and I had to work a lot to to be able to compete again. So I knew it's going to take a lot of time at that moment. You know, uh, looking at your social media and talking to you now, I mean, you do seem to be in in such a good place. In fact, your your Instagram, for example, is so full of inspirational sayings, things like "Don't yes. grieve," "Your attitude defines your altitude." You know, I love yes. that one. I mean, I think I'm translating it. It's in French in your Instagram, but I think that it translates that way into English. Um, uh, you, you keep going, you know, uh, this, this all makes sense to me now. I, I didn't know about the walk <laughs> and, uh, and, and the journey. I mean, the actual, you know, literal journey and, and the uh, metaphorical journey, journey you've been on as well um, to really knowing yourself. So, so uh, what, how is your relationship with your family these days? Well, it took a, a, a bit of time since 2017 um, uh, when I went to Paris and then I started to organize my team to start again my career uh, for approximately a year. At the moment, uh, during one year, I just focus on my health to see what's missing, if I have no injuries, if I can do sport, if I can run, if I can... And then during one year, I spent my time in Paris. And then after, I realized that after uh, trying with few coaches, uh, that I don't get good results. Uh, they were not as good as I I I, I want I search, mm -hmm. and they were more like they wanted to work with me for the image for the. They knew that my tennis. Uh, was it's still good because actually I'm playing good tennis wise, but physically I need to work harder a bit. Uh, and then they always wanted to to uh, I would say uh, take this part of me. They wanted to show on the media. Oh, I'm working with Aravan and I'm her coach and I'm blah blah blah. She's coming back. She's trying. But I test with them, I try with them, and I realize that they don't have the, the, the I would say, the, uh, the, the clean, you know, they, they, they don't have the clean mind. They, they want to, you know, they want to take a piece of you all the time, and then uh -huh. they try to, to use your image, and then I didn't like that. Uh -huh. So I start to think and, and, and say, okay, who's the best coach <laughs> and who try who thinks that you're the best it's your father <laughs> they, they, he's gonna be always there for you and and you that he's gonna be the only one that can brings you to the top because he's gonna be the only one that can push you to the top so I I make a sacrifice I said okay Aravan you are it, it was it was too too hard for 20, 20 years, but you have to go back again and to to go back on the court and push again and it's gonna be tough, but you know what you want. So you you know what you need to do to get there. Whoa. So so, so you went. So uh, yeah, this is father, like a, this is like I'm, I'm, I'm get, we're getting the last chapter of a novel. I want to. I'm, I'm waiting to see what happens. So did you go back with your father? Yes. So then uh, now it's it's less than a year that I'm working with my father every day, uh, every day. But our relationship is totally different than before. 
um, well, that it takes time. Huh? It takes time to yeah. <laughs> to, to <laughs> it takes time to 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 make everything, to build everything. The relationship with my father, it took a bit a bit of time, but now it's much better. We are able to having fun together. When I'm tired, I say, "Oh, Dad, you know what? I'm just tired. I just don't want to play. Just give me a, give me a break." And he's like, okay, no worries. What do you want? <laughs> so he loves me so much oh. that he's like, okay, I don't want to lose you again. I don't want to, 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 I just want a daughter and, and me, I just want a father. So our, re our relationship, it's more healthy now. And yeah. on the, on the tennis wise, I'm playing super good because when you're free in your mind, then you're you're stronger then you can play better and and that's what is happening to me so this is, now, the, this is the best story i've ever heard this is a, this is a great <laughs> story i i had no idea that i've because i knew you were because you've been kind of a mystery you know like there's like you're coming back people know that you're sort of doing tennis again and coming back but but it, it, at least in the media, publicly, there's not a lot of information. I know. I, I guess no. you've been you've been keeping it under wraps, right? So I yeah, wasn't actually, sure who I'm, your I'm coach not, was I'm, or what. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not uh, sharing much. My, I, we keep it a bit secret because, actually, I, I prefer to to show by my, with my results with yeah. winning matches. I don't want to, you know, make a big deal and saying, oh, I'm coming back. I'm gonna. Uh, win all the tournaments? No, I I prefer I prefer to keep it low, low, uh, low key because we never know. We never know what is gonna happen. Maybe I will reach there. Maybe not. We we don't know. So I prefer to keep it secret, to work hard, to to you know to do what I have to do. And once I'm on the top, and people will 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 hear up will hear about me yeah. so when you <laughs> but when you go back I, I i have to know when you um make the decision that there's only one person who can push me the way i need to be pushed there's only one person who can inspire me the way i need to be inspired there's there's only one person who can antagonize me enough to get me angry to get out there on the court and and push myself as hard and that's my dad um what was the conversation like with your dad? Did you do you call him and tell him that? Do you turn up at the doorstep and say, "Okay, let's go"? How did it happen? <laughs> I would say, um, well, my sister got married, and then I met my father, and then I spent a lot of time with my family, and then um, yeah, we slowly we get to to spend time together. Uh, but without talking about tennis, so it, the, the 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 goal was okay. Let's enjoying the the family time. Your family, yeah. And then and then slowly we start talking about okay, what do you want to do in life? He, he was asking me, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want to do? Where? Which point? Where you? Where you at? You know? <laughs> and I said, I want to play tennis. And it's like, okay, but you know, to play tennis, you have to work hard. So I say, yes. <laughs> so that's how we start talking and then trying first to see, uh, te first 10 days to see we, we, and then after 10 days, we decided to have a conversation and say, okay, is, is going to work? Are you happy? Are you not happy? What do you think? And then, yeah, we have a conversation now. We we can talk. Uh, before it was, a, you know, a situation that okay, I'm the father, you are my daughter, and you have yeah. to listen. Yeah. And you have to do it now. You've we, got agency we share, now. Yeah. 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 We share uh, ideas, and then he listens to me, and I listen more to him. So it's healthy, and I'm happy with that. It sounded like, I mean, he needed the same break that you needed to get perspective. And it was, yeah. it was a lesson for him as well, uh, even though he didn't walk the 600 uh, kilometers. Um, <laughs> he, he, he felt them clearly. Um, this is this is uh, I, I this I'm so honored to hear this whole story and and so inspired to 
to to to be ch- cheering you on along with uh, so many people around the world uh, as you uh, no matter what happens you know let's uh, no matter what happens in terms of your tennis career um, I, I should say and I want to just clear this up uh, for you too because because um, I, I think I know a little bit about it and, and I want to give you the chance to explain you know a lot of the people listening to this program are of Iranian descent and you even on your Instagram say you've got um, when the the flight 752 was shot down and things were difficult in January, you've got a, a heart posted a, a, on the map of Iran, and you're you, you it's clear you wear your Iranianness quite uh, proudly, and 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 you feel that connection, yeah. and you know you've you've had to deal with some Iranians feeling that you're not acting as you should. There was this situation in 2009 where you were invited yeah. to Iran, and you were put next to President Ahmadinejad at the time. <laughs> And yeah. you gave him a racket as some kind of formality, and then he ends up using that as an endorsement, as an advertisement in his election campaign. Exactly. And, and then you become associated with, you know, this uh, being sub, some big supporter of Ahmadinejad, even though that wasn't really your intention. I think if that's the way I, I know the story, do you, do you want to exactly. clear that up for us? Yeah, it, 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 that, that was the case. It's. Yeah, I went to Iran. I I I, I was in, uh, I was invited to Iran to not not even to meet meet the president at that moment. It's just you know being invited with the elites of uh, f- uh, Iranian from uh, not from Iran, right? <laughs> they were living outside of Iran, but they were like doctors, surgeons, and they were the best in their countries. And then we were all invited, and then. Uh, suddenly we are well I, I was 17 16 years old and I didn't know all this these things and I went there alone without my father without my mother and my cousin uh, it's a girl my, my cousin just uh, follow me and then she's older than me and like a mother she was taking care of me and then uh, I went there and to that meeting and suddenly uh, I saw, I mean, my cousin said, okay, you're going to meet the president. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great to give a gift, you know? And I was listening to that, to that cousin and I said, okay, maybe she's right. I don't know the, you know, the culture here, what we have to do, what we have to say or, and it, it was for me new, everything was new. Mm. And then I went to that meeting with two rackets and then suddenly uh, the president came to me and then with 20 cameras and journalists and and then and I didn't know what to say I did I, I start to cry <laughs> I start to cry because I was not expecting that situation and then I give the the, the two rackets and then my cousin start to uh, to to speak uh, uh, and say something in the camera and I was like keep repeating what she was saying because I, I didn't know what to say yeah. and then uh, <laughs> and then right. you know you, you at the moment you, I, I don't know I didn't know what to say what to do and I say okay you, suddenly you have 20 cameras you don't know what to say right, and then right. I just keep, give the racket and then I came out of that that conference that meeting and then many people told me that he uses for the um, the advertising for his election and and I, for me i said say okay i don't i don't care of whatever right because i didn't know the the politics in iran right. how, and how that's things the gre- were going that's the green movement election too so people are particularly angry that they're like why did this tennis girl come and support exactly. ahmadinejad like, and yeah but imagine a French girl that just speak Iranian, have no clue about the political and siyasat right. or whatever is going in Iran, and that meets only the president because, well, it's at that moment I said, okay, it's an honor to meet the president. Yes. Like, and yeah. it, 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 that was the only way I, 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 I thought. What are you but, supposed to say? Exactly. I, I understand. Very it. in an r- innocent r- way. You know, I, I, r- I didn't think the, what he was going after. <laughs> I had no clue, no idea. So, so for then, the record, you're not, you don't take positions on Iranian politics. It's not your regular, I your regular well, I, I feel really bad what is going on actually right now because I, I, I suffer for them because I see 
they are suffering really badly mm. uh, with everything but i i can't do anything so i i really feel the 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 pain but i'm not talking about politics i'm not part of it because i don't want to be part of it and i i'm an athlete and i keep i keep my image more as an athlete and to be as clean as possible because i don't want to be part of that side or the other side and, do, and do, do iranians still ask you about this event with the the ahmadinejad and the racket and all that uh, well so, some of them yes uh, oh. i had a hard time right after uh, people treading me a curse on me and many 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 things but uh, well now it's more or, almost more than than 10 years more yeah, yeah. so i hope that people forget that <laughs> but no some of them they don't and some of them actually they ask me why and i keep repeating what i'm telling you it's it's i had no clue what what it was going how how big big deal was <laughs> yeah. but um you know when you're 16 17 you don't you don't realize you don't know and yeah but yeah some people re like keep telling me and saying and and i explain i try to explain to my fan when they ask they ask me to my fans or to to some people why and w what what was the reason of my action why i give that racket why i yeah, did that yeah. and but it's purely innocent way you know well i'm glad that we've given you we've cleared that up <laughs> that's a way you can clear that perfect uh, Perfect. <laughs> it, uh, you know, I am so uh, grateful for the time you've spent today. I'm. I feel very self conscious that I've kept you in a car, sitting there because yeah. you wanted to be away from the parrot, but uh, <laughs> the Persian parrot who would have interrupted our interview. Although I really want to meet her now. You know, she seems like quite a character. Um, Aravon, you uh, on your Instagram, you write at one point, um, "Let the beauty of what you love." be what you do yes. that's a that's a roomy quote and and roomy uh, quote. you know let's end off where we started when we were talking about uh, andre agassi and about your feelings you you have told us that you don't love tennis you're back doing it now in a big way is it still bittersweet to be following the tennis path or have you reconciled reconciled yourself that this is a a passion now that you feel good about pursuing yeah, I mean, you know, after that, that uh, walking, um, I would say the walking uh, trip, <laughs> um, I went more spiritual and I went through the, you know, through deep talking with, m with me, with myself. And I realized that, yeah, life is short and life is, uh, there, there, are plenty, there are plenty things I would like to enjoy to, to experience and and you know, Rumi for me, it's um, it, I, 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 I read I, I read a lot of lot of books about Rumi, and and I'm more and more spiritual, and I'm more of I would say very um, close to God. I'm very spiritual, and I I have a big faith on God, and then that helps me a lot to keep fighting during my career during my life. The, the quote with Rumi says a lot of uh, powerful and deep um, meaning and that's actually uh, there there are some quotes that really uh, they they're saying exactly what I'm living actually hmm. so that's why I share a lot about Rumi quotes and then actually we are I mean I, Iranian so Rumi <laughs> it's uh, is very it's very important for me when I, I read and, and I express what I feel. It's it's true, Rumi. I, I like it to share like that, you know. You said earlier in the interview that when you were young, you're, you used to say your dream was to be number one. What is yes. your What is your dream now? My dream is still the same. <laughs> it's still the same to be number one, uh -huh. but in a different way. Um, I would say I reborn. I'm a new person. Uh, I had to die, and I reborn. And that new person, it's stronger. It's 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 uh, smarter. It's a better. It's happier. And and yeah, my goal is still to be number one. And I'm sure I will get there. 
and it, and if I'm not, well, I'm I'm still happy because the 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 process to 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 be there or to go there, it's what I love the most is the challenge, and that's that's enough for me. <laughs> Agavan, thank you so much for this today. I've I've enjoyed this. You're welcome. It's great talking <laughs> to welcome. you, and I. Uh, um, like I said before, I can't wait to watch you back on the courts. <laughs> I hope, I hope, but thank you for, for listening to me and I'm happy to share all, all my stories and then, yeah, I hope you, you will cheer for me when you see me on TV because I really need your, 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 uh, your cheers and then your, <laughs> your strength and then to, you know, your encouragement really helps me to, to move on and to fight and to to win matches we will all be cheering for you me my dog oogie your parrot uh <laughs> and everybody listening we'll all be cheering for you um, thank you merci as i'm talking to you again thank you for doing this thank you thank you very much bye bye thank you bye bye Agaman Rezaei, the French-Iranian tennis sensation. We reached her in her car, <laughs> I guess outside her home at Saint-Étienne, France today. a version of our theme played by a, a guy named Kambiz Mirzai. He's a an Iranian-Canadian songwriter, producer. I think he's a drummer, too, a lyricist. And uh, he sent this to us when we were calling out for people to do versions of our theme. It's great stuff. Uh, the team has reconvened. Captain Reza Gurbishaya, the fabulous Keon. Wow. I want to Reza. I did not see that. This thing about her uh, father, uh, working with her father again now, the thing she just said to me, she, that is not anywhere in the news. That's, that's mm. uh, um, I did not know. I didn't see that coming. And the way she teased that out in the story. Wow, she was that was fantastic and I'm I'm so glad to hear that it's come full circle. It was like a little novella. It was like mm, a mini series yeah. that interview. Yes. It was like yeah. a little mini series. That was so shocking. Like with turns and twists and <laughs> surprise she, ending. She has to write Keon. a book. Oh my it just like it was like watching a movie. I could imagine every part of her describing the story, walking six hundred kilometers across France when she needed to And that I knew nothing about that either. <laughs> That's a, yeah. You know, her yeah. upbringing, her family depending on her financially to win tournaments. Like the, crazy how she would get to tournaments, but she, they didn't have enough money to come back. Yeah. So they depended on her to win yeah. those tournaments. Yeah. So well, she, that stuff is part of her story, which okay. is, and it's a remarkable story. Mm. And, and it's a, a heartbreaking and yeah. the pressure that that kid would have been under. I mean, she's figured it out yeah. now, and but it took her until she was in her early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, but but this stuff about the walk and the <laughs> the, the, the basically finding herself on this six hundred yeah. what was it six hundred kilometer walk yeah, I'm trying so, to yeah, yeah. process Across it right now. Across France, it took her a month to do it. Yeah, this. yeah, and didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I know, I know, I kind of want. I, wanted, I, I, I know, you know. but do, do you really think you could? I, if I needed clarity, if I just wanted to escape my life and people, I if I reached that level in life, yes, I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm in awe of her. I just I want to be friends with this woman. Mm -hmm. She's uh, Groovy Shia. Yeah. Your thoughts on Aravana Rezaei? The thing actually was shocking for me, and I was. <laughs> I had <laughs> you, you had goosebumps. I, goosebumps. <laughs> I had. I like it when you say uh, when he fixed it. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he I, said, I, I, uh, "Oh yeah, sorry, I had goosebump," and I love that because there's just one. Yeah. He got one goosebump <laughs> somewhere. It wasn't that yeah. <laughs> you had goosebumps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I had goosebumps. Yeah. Uh, 
I I had no idea that she's were, she's kind of spiritual people, you know. Yeah. She, yeah, she loves yeah. Rumi. She and also that that kind of work, I can imagine it's it's like meditation for mm. her. He, she needs a long way meditate meditative way. Yes. Mm. Yeah, and that was uh, I I like her before, but now I I really you know admire her yeah I, I really do too I yeah. thought she was fantastic I, I re- uh, Captain Reza any thoughts uh, well yeah just like every one of you guys like I was shocked with about that story as well but more than that like uh, what I really liked about her was that um, she, she, she and I n- never heard anybody else talk about this that she went back to Iran and everybody was telling her that oh it's easy for you because you live in France yeah. and things are easy for you to make it. and she says no it's, it really isn't there is no difference in fact it may be a little bit harder uh, because of the racism and the things that she faced. Yes. It was, it was really yes. interesting. That was, there yeah. was so much there yeah. in, in all that she had to say. By the way, her English was not only fine, mm. it was charming. It yeah, was, it it was, was great. I, I'm glad, I'm so glad that uh, there was some talk um, uh, leading up to this and I even talked to her about it before we did the interview a, a couple of days ago and then said, are you comfortable we could do this mm. in Farsi? And she's like, no, I really want to do it in English and I thought the, she was great. And yeah, she doesn't yeah, have yeah. a lot of English interviews. I don't she, know. There's none. Th- she has there's none. none. She's think. done. There's a couple of clips of her mm-hmm. talking for you know third, 15 seconds mm-hmm. or something. So I, I don't think there's any long form interview that yeah. she's ever done in English. And, oh, and uh, yeah. gotta love that French Persian accent. I was like, oh, keep talking. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so yeah. sexy. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah um, uh, and I think you guys are the same age. And she's been. I think so. She's been one of the top tennis players in the world I, uh, she's rub done it all in, of that <laughs> and what have you done Gia? i'm just I, thinking I, of my mom mom she <laughs> took my mother took me out of tennis because my shoulders were getting too muscular i could have oh, been i could have yeah. very well been like, <laughs> uh, like my next life i'm determined <laughs> could have been a yeah. that, so uh you, you have very lovely shoulders oh, thank though. you yeah. yeah preserve well preserved <laughs> yeah. shoulders the, yeah. the, the persian mother her, her the thing that she was most concerned with was her <laughs> daughter's beauty <laughs> like what does that tell you about her oh, culture <laughs> i love her to your death your poor mother i know does I she love listen her. she does oh, no I, I i poke fun at her but i yeah. adore my mother and I, as yeah. the same as you i poke fun at you yeah, but course. i also adore your mother of course yeah. but i must say i i'm so invested in aravon's story now i want to see her succeed i want to see her i know win, both yeah. in tennis yeah. and in life yeah, yeah. yeah. So. well she has a yeah, new fan in she has new hopefully new fans Many. in all those books mm-hmm. listen speaking of the fact that fans around the uh, around the world and and Aravon was just speaking to us from France i should have mentioned this at the top of the show we have a new <laughs> a new idea we have a new rook idea uh, uh, which is that um, we want to, since uh, you know and we really heard this with the Chajayan episode we have people from uh, we had guests from all over the world, but we're seeing in our analytics on our, you know, SoundCloud and Instagram and YouTube, when we look at where the audience is, it's really around the world. So we thought this would be fun. Wherever you are, and if you like what you're hearing, um, post a picture of yourself, or don't even post it. Send the picture of yourself to us with a sign saying, I'm listening to Rook. It can be in English. It can be in French, it can be in Persian, it can be in whatever language. Uh, Some kind of sign, some kind of indication, I'm listening to Rook, and then we're going to set up a gallery Mm -hmm. on our site of all the folks uh, around the world. Tell us just where you are. So I'm listening to Rook, and either tell us or put it on the sign or something. I'm in Tehran, I'm in Toronto, wherever it is. So you can message us on Instagram. Of course, our Instagram is uh, Rook Media, so just send it, to, uh, message us there. Or you can email to us at info at rookmedia.com. Have I got all that right? That's Captain right. Reza? You got it all right. I'm listening to Rook, and tell us where you are. Send us a pic, or send us a pic of your, um, maybe Oogie. Oogie will send my dog will send in a photo. Yeah. 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 yeah maybe. Did you say no? With no, I said ah. Yeah. With the Rasu, I would hope. The Rasu is long gone <laughs> and Godspeed to the Rasu. <laughs> I just thinking of the Rasu, uh, I have been goosebumped. <laughs> what was it? What was goosebumped. I was goosebumped. I was goosebumped, yes. Yeah. I have one goosebump. Well, trust me, if uh, you would have confronted that gulag, you might have been goosebumped. <laughs> Speaking of which, the gym is now shut down. Oh, I, no. I have a feeling it has oh, something to do with the gulag. You, I told the story about the, the gu- gym and 
then immediately the gyms were closed. I know you angered the gulag. I'm so so you. This was you were saying this is uh, this is your worst case scenario. Yeah, you were like you can't breathe if I'm you can't go do. to the gym. But uh, COVID cases are going back up. We got to be there's, careful. There's been none in the gym. They're doing such a good job of preventing it. So I'm just I'm angered by this. Yeah. Well, anyway, moving all on. Right. <laughs> Well, on that note, let's get to the letters. <laughs> of the week. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, the fabulous Keon is here. Captain Reza, Groovy Shy. Let's get to the letters of the day. Okay, so with the sudden passing of the iconic maestro Mohammad Reza Shajari on last Thursday, we completely reshuffled and planned a whole new episode that day as a tribute to the icon. Several important voices in the global Iranian community were featured on the episode to share their thoughts on the maestro's sudden passing and the massive impact he's had on not just Iranian music, but Iranian politics as well. So on that specific episode, we've had so many comments come in, and they're still coming in. On YouTube, we have a Bahar Ganbari. She wrote, This is truly a global day of mourning for all Persian-speaking people. If Ferdosi was the savior of Persian language, Maestro Shajarian was the savior of the Iranian Asil music. He will live in our hearts and our minds, and his majestic voice will fill our homes for generations to come. Kudos to you and your team. It must have been a very difficult task to make this episode in one day. Varan, it's... Thank you, Bahar. Yeah. Oh, and then we have Payom Karbosi wrote, This program was a masterpiece and especially well prepared in such a short time. It was so informative and we really enjoyed it. Thanks, Gian. Thanks so much, Payam. And, and, you know, it was a, it was a 17 hour day. Um, the best part of it was uh, when I, I sort of looked at everybody in the team and said, you know, if we're going to do this, we got to go. We got to, everybody's got to hustle. And, and the passion um, that everybody showed to do something for Shajarian, to do something for the community, to try and make this all happen on this team was, was really inspiring. I'm really touched by um, everybody. So, uh, and thank you for that, that uh, comment, uh, Payam. Uh, that's a really, really kind of you. Mm, very well said. And then we have Iraj Zarobi wrote, Great program in such a short time. A true masterpiece. Thank you all. Thank you, Iraj. And then username, no name listed. The username is Al, King of Persia, wrote, oh. uh -hmm, Listen mm. quick, listen up. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jian John. I'm so glad to find your program again. I used to listen to your show Q with Jian all the time on WNYC. You're amazing and always interview the experts. I agree with that. Thank you, mm -hmm. King of Persia, mm -hmm. and, and obviously in New York. That's yeah. where we were on WNYC. Thank you. So glad that you found Rook. That means a lot. Yeah. And then Cyrus Kalatbadi wrote, Gian, a great move on your part to turn around and arrange such a wonderful program in such short notice. Thank you, Cyrus. And, and kudos to the, the team, everybody wanting to do that. In fact, uh, Shia was one of the uh, first people to say, we got to do something mm -hmm. for Shajarian, and we all... We certainly all agreed. All hands on deck that day. Hob, on Facebook, this next uh, note by Ang Agnes Liu was quite beautiful, actually. I, I was almost going to put it as letter of the week, but uh, it came a close second. Mm. So she wrote, Jian and Rook team, I was listening to this special episode on my morning walk. I am not Iranian. I don't know much about Persian culture. I only understand the English part of the interviews, but I can deeply feel that an icon has fallen. I am so sorry that a soul that had touched generations fin finally went on its way. However, like, like one of the guests said, Ustad Shajarian has not gone and he will always be in people's minds. The mind has unbelievable power to connect and build. I sincerely hope that the Iranian community unite closer and stronger Follow the Ostad's legacy and make Iran strong again. Rest in peace, Ostad Shajarian. And she wrote, Rise up, Iran. Beautiful. Wow, that's Very great. Mm. I, I, what was her name? This was Agnes Liu. Agnes Liu. Mm -hmm. I love that letter. Yeah. Beautiful. That's, that's not the letter of the week. I, letter of the day. I'm almost angry at myself. <laughs> but no, the letter of the, mm. the day that's coming up okay. is quite beautiful as well. 
خب and then moving on to Instagram we have a Shani Yusufan wrote yesterday I thought about that scene in the movie A Separation when the only thing that she took was Shajarian's record when she was leaving Iran in the end in the end of that movie that, that's where Abbas Milani talks about that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a profound scene by the way that just goes to show how much of an impact he had on I- Iran that was Abbas yeah. Milani's point Beautiful. Um, and then we have Sima Khosravi wrote, Thank you for your special edition. It was sad and heartbreaking. I've been listening to all your episodes since you started, but this one to me was like a painkiller. I liked all your interviews in this episode, especially Goldroch. Very significant and simple. Thank you again. Merci, oh, Sima John. Thank you for that. That's mm-hmm. nice. And then moving on, we have Amir Nikdel. Oh, <laughs> Amir Nikdel, <laughs> he, he he's almost, back. You hurt my ears. Nikdel. Nikdel. Nikdel, Nick, Nick Dale. Nick Dale, as we now know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite uh, fan, uh, fan of the show wrote, <laughs> Merci. The Hamid Nick Pay interview was, one, uh, was the one I really loved. Thank you, guys. All right. True. Thanks, Amir. And then we have Paddy Naz Talegani wrote, Thank you all for such a great job in a very f- short time. That was a wonderful tribute. Beautiful. Nice, merci, Pernas. And then it's time for the letter of the day. Mm. Woo! <laughs> cool. uh, th- today we have Negin Dusti who wrote in to us uh, from on YouTube. She wrote, Maestro Shajarian was the distinctive, unrivaled voice of Persian classical music. He showed the world the most authentic artistic image of Iran. He kindled emotions and spread passion and culture not only through the sheer color of his voice, his innate musicianship and wonderful diction, but also through his actions and by standing in solidarity with his people. His legacy will continue through his music. May he rest in peace. That was incredible. Wow, Negin Dusti. You have the letter of the day. Uh, oh, that was a good choice, mm-hmm. Keon. You did well there. That um, she she's written to us several times before, yeah. and she she always she's got a nice uh, way of speaking. She I does. Like that. She yeah, has good diction. Very, yeah, for sure. yeah, totally. How do you yeah. know how she speaks? Well, she's she writing. Did, <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> She's got, got a nice way of. She's got a nice, <laughs> nice diction. That's that's like, that's or, or, oral. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, that's that. Uh, I mean, um, uh, that, that you'd okay. hear oh, diction. Yeah. You can't uh, you can't see diction. But I she's can't. got she's spe- but she writes well. Or is what she you writes mean. well. Yeah. So what's the word for that when someone writes well? She's eloquent. She's, uh, eloquent. she's okay. you know a good she's good writer. I'm sure she has good diction as well. She Shut probably up, has Gia. excellent diction. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you, Dusty. You have the letter of the day. This is full time for Rook for today. Thank you to uh, all of you folks who've been listening uh, and supporting us. Remember, rookmedia.com is where to find thing, all things Rook. We're continuing to build our website. It's got all the episodes there, uh, all the links to our different platforms. Our patron circle is there. If you want to help us out and support Rook, you can... Um, sign up there that would be really great for us Uh, and also send us a pic of wherever you are tell us where you are and hold up a sign that says I'm listening to Rook we'll post it on our website gallery that we're building Uh, thank you to the team Savvy Roham Ponta the Artist Producer Susan Aramir Dodd Mohammed Captain Reza The Fabulous Keon Groovy Shia see you all on Thursday Mizunbashim